All right. The key light that I have here is right in the middle of the scene. I'm just going to move it uh, again, as I said in the previous video. Uh, this type of light has no uh, positional impact on the scene. It's simply rotation. So wherever you're pointing that light makes a difference. But as you can see when I'm moving this light around, it doesn't change anything for the surface of the ship or the lighting itself. So we're going to again just you know give it a little rake across the top of the ship. Maybe we'll go this way. That's kind of nice. This is great because I can actually see this in OpenGL. See how the surface is reacting to that light and I don't have to open up F prime. Now I really love F prime but uh, sometimes on larger polygon scenes it uh, falls down because it does have to do some things that uh, uh, pushes a little bit further than what um, it was designed for. Now I can take this camera and move it over to the other side of the ship. We'll just point it back into the Pegasus. We're going to take a quick little camera move here just to the bottom of the ship. And for the moment, what I'm going to do in the display options is I'm going to turn off the OpenGL lens flare. Those those are really distracting to look at all the time. But that's the great thing about Lego. I can turn that stuff off. Um, another function is OpenGL fog. Let's go and check that out. I haven't tested this yet with the Sparkle card. Uh, some cards have problems with this. Some cards don't. Uh, let's set the fog to realistic. Let's set it to um, white just so you get an idea of what's going on. Uh, now, basically, one meter away, this fog is at 100%. So we're going to pull that out and see what we get. So that's at 60, 70 kilometers. We're probably about five kilometers away from it at most. So you can see how the fog works in there quite nicely. Let's uh, change that back to that nice purple that we had before. Uh, somewhere in there. I'll go with that for now. That'll just give you a really good idea how much that punches out. And we can change the amount. Now that's not so bad. That's a you know relatively good performance for what it's doing there. Let's pull this down. And we can crank that fog up. Now the reason why I'm doing this is just to test the card and see how it's dealing with this, but there is a purpose to using fog in a ship shot like this, um, but it comes later when we would break these different types of scenes out for render. We would use fog, uh, or linear fog, as uh, a way to control depth of field or do uh, an artificial focus pull in 2D uh, using the luminosity uh, to determine, you know, this solid color back here is far away and what is showing up here near uh, is more in focus. So that's a trick that we use there to allow us to pull focus in the shots but not actually spend the render time in 3D to do it. I'm going to turn this off for now because we're not going to render with purple fog or pink fog and we're going to take a look at the settings for one of the lights in here. Look at all these lights. This is, this is, this is pretty killer. Now normally I wouldn't scroll through all these using this tool with this many lights in the scene. I just want to give you an idea of just how many lights are actually physically in this shot. And the reason for that is we're going to quickly uh, load one more light and then we're going to do a render test here. And we're going to see how the Phenom uh, is going to hold up here. And we're going to do a little bit of a discussion there about how it was rendering compared to what we had on render times for season two and season three. So we're going to call this a rad faker. This is a special type of light. That's just what I call it, a rad faker, because it's going to fake radiosity. If you saw the previous video, uh, you'll understand what I'm uh, getting at there. Now this uh, light intensity is a little bit too hot. We're going to set this to 15%. I'm going to turn the specularity off. And there's a little icon view here. Um, this icon view is uh, very, very cool. Uh, what it does is it gives me a representation of what that light looks like. Um, I literally, I have to drive this up to like 5,000%. There you go. That's what that light physically would look like if it existed. Um, basically, as a dome light, all of the little squares or polys in here uh, would be pointing in, but this representation in OpenGL actually isn't how the light works. It's just a representation so that you can see it. 
the reality of it is, is that this dome exists infinitely out away from the center origin of the scene and points its rays back in towards the objects inside of the scene. And that uh, uh, gives us an effect of global illumination or radiosity without actually having to use global illumination. So, demonstrate that really, really quickly. I'm going to set the uh, level of this up to 100% and we're going to turn the key light off. We're just going to render right now with just this dome light. All right, we're going to hit the render button and Lightwave is going to load all this stuff in and it's going to start cranking that image out. You can see just how fast this is rendering. This is a majorly large ship. It's 3.9 million polygons. Uh, it's consuming a huge amount of RAM. And of course, we've got all those engines on in there. These engines are probably not the right engines. These are intended for glow. Uh, that would be uh, processed further and probably chunked down quite significantly in composite, but it's there as uh, part of the assembly. All right, we're going to just go and get rid of that. We're going to get rid of this graph editor. All right, we're going to go and take the glow behind engines. We're going to get rid of those. We'll just delete them right out of the scene. I'll take a moment. And there's some additional lights in here as well. 